It's 2016. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I don't know. I don't know how today's going to go. I don't know what all I can say either. Um, I do know I have an agenda today that I want to get to. But I want to share some stuff that I think God's put on my heart that I feel is kind of a theme for 2016, not just in this place, but in the body of Christ. Um, last, this, this last week, we got geared up again, business as usual. We had our Tuesday night, our Wednesday night. And as I was getting prepared for Tuesday night on the day before, he shared, the Lord shared something with me. And, and I was asking, Lord, how is this study that we do on Tuesday night? It's called Experiencing God. Everybody say Experiencing God. Experiencing God. That's the name of the study. Very popular, well-known, been around a long, long time. It's very intense and a lot of work. Tuesday night people are going to I was asking the Lord, how, how does this thing connect with what we're doing here on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings and, and, and just the overall thing? And how, how does it fit with us being a how, because honestly, the experience of God thinks that I've study. And, and it's awesome, it's really good. And uh, I said, how, how does this connect? And I, I want to point to the scriptures in Ephesians. I think they've got it up on the screen. Dad's got it um, on the ball. This, this is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And it says, For by grace, are you saved through faith? And that out of yourselves is the gift of God. I want to break that down a little bit. For my grace, what's grace? This is something we, we know, I've talked about it. What's grace? Mercy. It's an aspect of grace. Grace is defined as unmerited divine favor. The favor of the Lord on your life, in every, every area of your life. Undefined, undeserved favor. Amen. Mercy is defined, as I said, mercy. Mercy is defined as not getting what you deserve. What do we all deserve? deserve. The Bible says, for all of sin and all of the glory of God. What do we all deserve? Death. We had a death sentence. But because of God's mercy, we didn't get what we, what we deserved. He took it for us. That's mercy. Grace is divine, unmerited favor. So it says, for by grace are you saved. Now saved, we all know, that's the word sozo. Sozo, that's the Greek word. And if you read that in the original text, that word saved right there is actually the word sozo. What does sozo mean? That is the word for salvation. It doesn't mean just going to heaven. That's part of it. But sozo is the total restoration of the total man. And the total man is what? Spirit, soul, body. You are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a body. You're not your soul, your mind, your emotions, your intellect. You're, you're not that. You're certainly not your body. You are a spirit. Sozo is the total restoration of all three of those things. Complete and total rest restoration to what? Restoration of what was lost in the garden. Before sin entered the world. That's what sozo is. So it's by God's divine and merit and favor that you've been sozo. You didn't earn it. Your behavior didn't earn it. What you've done or what you will do is never going to hurt it. It's God's undeserved, unmerited favor. But what about that last part? Through faith. Some people say faith is what you believe. And that may be a legal definition of it. But 
You can say you believe one thing and do something else. Faith is an action. Faith is what you do that demonstrates what you believe. You can say you believe something else, but your actions say you believe differently. Faith is always an action. You can say, well, yes, I believe that, and that's the first step. The mental decision. But until you take that first step, James says faith without works is dead. Not that works are going to save you. They're not. It's by grace that you got so saved. Not through, not, not by, it doesn't say by faith you got so saved. It said by grace you got so saved. Through faith. Faith is the vehicle. So, for by God's unmerited favor, you are sozo through your actions. It's not works based, it's not works based at all. What I'm trying to say is, your belief is going to change your actions. And if you've got an area in your life that the, that the behavior don't match up with what you say you believe, then it's time to get some sozo in that area of your life so your behavior will change to match what you've already received through grace. Does that make sense? That's not a condemning word. I got areas too. We all got areas. I, I, you know, we all got them. But it's about God's unmerited favor. So that, that's important. Just hang on to that. And back up. So I was talking to God about the study, experiencing God. Because uh, I, I don't want to just haphazardly do things just for the sake of doing things. And actually, the study says that. Don't just do stuff for God because you want to do stuff for God. Do stuff for God, the stuff He's told you to do. You know, only do those things. And, and if God's really in this, then there's things, there's an underlying thing. So I said, Lord, well, how, how does this connect? It brought me to this verse. And then he said, you, and the Jews and I thought it was this, but I, I just need to share it. He, he said, Do you, you know you can change the name of that book, right? And what's the name of the book? Experiencing God. Right? He said, you, can know, you, you know you can change the name of that study, that book, right? So change it to what? He said, you can change it to experiencing so-so. Then he said, and, and in reality, everywhere my name is mentioned in that book, you know, God, you can take that out and put in the word so-so. So my first reaction, what did you say I heard laughing? Was my first reaction was, Lord, that's blasphemy. You can't do that. Then he brought me into this place mentally. And I saw these behaviors. He said, Look at those behaviors. And everyone, y'all gotta look at them. Look at them. Don't look at the behaviors. Look at them. These are the names of the Lord. They're not all of them. There's just six of them that we have here. Here's one. These are the, these are the names of the Lord. And he says, Every one of these names is an aspect of Sozo. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Sozo. Jehovah Shaman, the Lord is present. He's present because of Sozo. Jehovah Shalom, peace. We got peace because of Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord, my righteousness. We have the righteousness of Christ because of I should be strong. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. I, I, I get healing in my body because of Jehovah Ezra, the Lord our helper. I get help from the Lord because of every time someone in the Old Testament got a revelation of God, experienced God in a new way, they usually created an altar and they named the altar what they experienced, and it was God's new name. 
So in Hebrew, your name represents your character. It represents your nature. You get that? Then the Lord, this is something that's using like your hat. Then the Lord showed me a new man. And it's right up here. A new man. You know what was going to share what was on that? The Lord said, this is my new name. And it said, Jehovah, my sozo. Jehovah, my sozo. It's a legal name. Every one of these names represents an aspect of sozo. And these are the names of God. It's in the Bible. So, you know, well, that may be blasphemy, Jeff. You can't just go out and name God new names. Why? Wow. The, the, the books of the Old Testament did. Every time they experienced something about God new, they made an altar and that was a new name for God. Well, I'm sorry, but I have now experienced Sozo. So he is now Jehovah, my Sozo. Do you understand that? I get messed up when I start thinking about that. I just get messed up. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if some of you guys don't, but maybe you just haven't been through what God's walking through. But I get messed up when I start thinking about Jehovah, my sozo. That's the thing for 2016. I believe that with all my heart. That's the thing for 2016. Jehovah, my sozo. For so many years, centuries, church, has preached the salvation message to mean change your behavior, change the way you act, pray this prayer, and you'll get to heaven. But you're going to live poor, destitute, you're going to struggle and suffer, and all of these things while you're here on earth. But Believe this certain way, say these certain things, be here on certain days, and you'll get to heaven. And I just feel repentant about that. I don't, and it's a weird feeling. I feel repentant for what the church has done the past few hundred years. The Lord's just put it on my heart. I feel repentant. I feel like I need to repent for what they did. Because that's not God. That's not salvation. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel that says just name a new Cadillac. Those those don't give it to you. I, I, that, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is God don't want you to be in life. Amen. Not financially, not spiritually. Amen. He don't want you to be in life. Are, are, are you going to be a billionaire? Well, probably not. But... I look at some of the guys in the Christian world that who I respect. This may hurt some folks who are hurting me already. Some, some, not all of them, but some of them that I respect that have just gotten crazy rich by being a pastor are the ones who usually give out more than what they take in every year. Yes. And it's like they can't outgive God. The more they give, the more they get. Right. Bill Johnson's the one. Bill, Bill gives out more than he gets every year. He's like, it's a contest. We try, try, try. We push and push and push. We give and give and give till we're broken. And then all of a sudden, bam, there's a whole bunch of big old huge pile of money. So I can't, it just works that way. Why? Because he has no love of the money. Therefore, God can trust him. It is when we get that love of the money, God can be this kind of love. Well, the Bible says that's the root of all evil. The love of it is the root of all evil. Not in it, the love of it, right? That's really, I have no idea why I went there. But. Some of you, I'm just going to come out and say it. How many of you noticed that I've stopped doing the affirmation of faith in the body? How many of you noticed that?
It started out innocently enough. Advent just didn't have time. The Advent reading and the extra Christmas stuff just didn't have time. It'll be all right. That mix it for a few weeks and you know we'll pick it back up. But as I prayed about this thing. If you don't know it, a lot of them of the heart, and if you don't grab your bullet to just pull it out, there's probably someone going to back there. Just grab and pull it out. I'm just going to answer some questions real quick. Jeff, do you agree with it? Absolutely. Jeff, do you have a problem with it? Absolutely not. Jeff, what's your opinion on that? I think it's some of the strongest language, most awesome language that outside of scripture they can be written. Jeff, what's your problem with it? We've lost its meaning. We've lost its meaning. It's just something we do. I'm not going to be a religious leader. It does things because that's just what we do. That'll be the first step I stop doing. I want to do this again. It's on my heart to do this again. But I don't want to do it as part of a worship service. I want us to do it with the revelation of Sozo. And do you know that I see Sozo with this? I'm going to explain it in a minute, but I see Sozo with this. Now, there's a group of us who wants me to do this every Sunday. They've grown up doing it. It's part of their heritage. And I respect that. I grew up doing it too. Here in this place. And just for you know, it's not a Methodist thing. It, 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 this, this transcends Methodism. But it was before Methodist. Everybody was on the face of the earth, but Methodist and Dobby. There's some of us here that have no clue what this means. Whatever, Joe. That's something that's in the bulletin. Okay. There's some of us that have problems with some of the language that's in here. And I get that and understand. It's a very old English. The big one. Is I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. So a lot of us get an intellectual offense and says, saying that I'm not Catholic. Well, and there's other translations of it. There, there's updated versions that don't have that. It just so happens that this is the most popular one because this is what everybody's known for a hundred years that we've been doing this. And I've probably said this before, you guys know it, but the Catholic Church just simply means I believe the church. And I do. I believe in the church. It is God's institution. It is the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We're the body. It's important. I believe in the church. And when I understand that Catholic Church means, in this context, means the, the body of Christ, I want to shout it from the rooftops. You know, when this was put in Methodist worship, I, I, I'm meddling. I'm going to meddle. I'm sorry, I'll be mad at you too, but I'm going to meddle today. I've been told we need to start doing this again because this is what makes us Methodist. Let me tell you something. That's so far from the truth, it's a lie straight from hell. It's a deception from the enemy. This is not what makes us Methodist. What we do in these four walls does not make us Methodist. It's what we do outside these four walls that makes us Methodist. Amen. It's getting back to the John Wesley way of doing things that I hear everybody that talks about Methodism. Methodist are people that's not Methodist. If we could just get back to the way John Wesley did things, well, if you really want to, that requires work and effort and picking up your cross. 
daily and follow Jesus Christ in every area of your life. John Wesley coined a phrase that said lifestyle Christianity. It means when I get up in the morning, I walk out the door and I look for people to love them. I look for people to minister to. When I go to the grocery store, I look for the hurting. And I go and I speak a word of knowledge and speak a prophecy over them. When I, when I go to church, it's just a place where I come to talk about how I was Methodist throughout the week. Amen. What we do here does not make us Methodist. It's what we do out there. And I'll go a step further. What you do in here does not make you a Christian. What you do out there makes you a Christian. That's right. Go ahead. So to tell me, Jeff, this is what makes us Methodist, I'm sorry you're wrong. It does not. I'm sorry if that offends you, but I don't want you to be victim to that deception any longer. Because it's exactly what it is. Some of my friends that have known me in my new life, but apart from this place, I had a conversation with one couple weeks ago. Baffled that I'm here. They're baffled that I'm in this place. How can you be there? I mean, that's a religious denomination. You guys have rituals. And I'm like, man, have you read what we believe? Have you go on the website and read what we believe? And it's strong. And it's right. Give me grace, especially those watching my YouTube, Facebook. I'm not saying to get to heaven you have to be a Methodist. That's not what I'm saying. To get to heaven you have to believe in Jesus Christ and be born again. Okay? But for me, my family, our doctrine is real close. I mean, it's good. It believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. It believes in us. A separate infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's apart from salvation. It believes in prophecy. It believes in tongues. It believes in healing. It believes in all of that stuff and preaches it. But the problem is to operate in that kind of stuff. We have to be Methodist out there more than we're Methodist in here. And we, and we want to get back to the way John Wesley did stuff. Well, then forget about this place. Go out there and John Wesley. John Wesley was John Wesley in the Church of England. Did you know that? John Wesley was John Wesley in the Church of England, not a Methodist church. He was John Wesley out there. It's the theme for 2016. That's so-so. Do you know that that's so-so? There, there's a thing in our Experience in God class that says you can't go with God and stay where you are. So let's use God's principle that he told me. You can't go with sozo and stay where you are. If you want sozo in your life and in every area of your life, you, you, you can't stay where you are. That is physically, mentally, and spiritually. You can't stay where you are. You know what I see? I'm not sure what I see. Here's what I see. I saw this. I want to show you this. This is the church. I'm going to climb like a big old staircase up the mountain. You have kind of this car up the mountain. You know, you've seen them. Those way up at the top. I'm walking up this mountain. I'm tired. I'm going to pray for freedom. You know, so freedom is a part of so so. Did you know that? Okay. So we're praying for freedom. We're praying, Lord, give us freedom. Give us freedom. But here's what we're doing here's how we walk up the thing. Staircase when we're called to run with the horsemen and outrun the horses. Psalm says that. And we're praying for freedom, we're praying for freedom. And the Lord showed me a, a picture of Sozo, it's a word of Sozo. It's right here in front of us. But to grab it, we got to let go of all this junk we pulled behind us. If we let go of it, we can just grab it and run up that staircase.
That's what I see. But I see in 20, here's the good news. Here's what I see in 2016. Yes. That's what I see. It's what the Lord showed me. It's not just this place, it's the body of Christ. How many, how many believe we're in the last days? We've been studying in Revelation on Wednesday night. We've been studying it really in depth too. This is really, we're all getting four or five verses at a time. And it's, it's been, and I think that we have just, we've seen it in Scripture because we're, we're, we're going, pulling all through Scripture. I mean, it's very clear and very evident for those of you guys who are coming on Wednesday nights. Um, the stage is set. And it's almost like the dress rehearsal has already been done. It, it, the curtains are ready to part for the stage of the last days. Technology that's talked about in the Bible to get some of these stuff, this stuff done has been around for decades. Do you realize that? I mean, it's like a fit, and all it takes is, and then we're, 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 we're here. We see the biblical and the last day prophecy unfold, the bad stuff. We've already seen a bunch of it before now. If you haven't been here on Wednesday night and you're interested in it, it's not too late to jump in. Come on, we'll be in chapter 13. Come on, it doesn't matter where you start, just come on. I see sozo all through Revelation. Did you know that? I know this is weird, this is a weird message. Pull this back up. Go to the glory of Patrick. This little song here. I know that's a weird name. I think it's weird. It's all weird. But look at the look at it. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Do you believe in the Trinity? Yes. I believe in the Father, I believe in the Son, and I believe in the Holy Ghost. And I'm not ashamed of it. And I give them glory and I give them praise. And in fact, when I call God by one of his names, I'm praising him for who he is, for his character, for his nature. Listen, listen. This is a song about social. As it was in the beginning. What? The beginning. In the garden. In the garden. Where, you know, remember, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, guess what? In the beginning, it was just like that. No sin, no corruption. Perfectness in the beginning. This is a declarative song. As it was in the beginning. As it was then in the garden. Because of Sozo, I claim it that it is now. Now. Sozo, now. Just like it was back then. Through the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, Sozo, now. Just like it was back then. Amen. And the devil can't take it away. Ever shall. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven, now and ever shall be. Ever. Forever means forever. Never stop. That means there's no weapon that the enemy can fashion that can take my sozo away from me. It's a decorative warrior soul that says sozo now and ever shall be. Amen. Let's go to the next part. World without end. Substitute the word world for kingdom. Now, does that, does that ring the bell? God's kingdom without end here on this earth because I am the body of Christ. He is my head, but I am the body. And the government doesn't rest on the head of Christ, it rests on the shoulders of Christ. And I am the body, and I will be the enforcer of his government here on earth. Through love, through demonstration of power of the Holy Ghost, I will do that. 
God's kingdom without an end. Amen. And amen. Amen just means so be it. Who knew? Declan warrior statement that claims sozo over my life and over this world eternally. Gaza. See, there's a reason this was interjected in a form of worship. Can I submit to you that this was put in our form of worship however many years ago it was, because there was a heart cry there and they needed something to express it. So this was put in. This was created. This was put in to express the heart cry that's already there. Somehow through the years, we've still got the expression, but we've lost our heart cry. That's my prayer request. That's what I'm asking each and every one of you. Call the people that are here. I want you to pray. 2016 is going to be a year, a year of prayer. This is, Lord, we want our heart cry back that expresses that. Yeah, we have the expression, but we want, we want the meaning back. I, I would love for, for, for there to be some worship. When we put this back in, for us to say it so loudly, so passionately, folks get so excited, y'all start running around the sanctuary. Amen. Why not? When you understand that this is about sozo, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you so you can be restored back to what was lost in the garden. A relationship with the Father that you were cut off from because of one man's disobedience. But now because of one man's obedience, you can have it back. I'm talking about your salvation. I'm talking about your, your the, every blessing you've ever had in your life. That's what I'm talking about. The blessings your kids have received and will receive. The blessings your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews. That's just what I'm talking about. This isn't just something we do. It's so simple. And such a horrible price was paid for it. And it will be a cold day and you know where before this just becomes something that we do in my heart because my Lord and Savior died so we can sing and say it. You want to get back to what John Wesley was doing? It don't happen in you. If you want the fruit of it to, to take place in here, the awesome meetings and, and the place to fill up, then, then you need to live like John Wesley lived out there. Do you yes. Yes. Amen, lights. Amen, Amen Pew. Yes. Amen, Captain. I said, if you want the fruit, if you want the fruit, of getting back to the way John Wesley used to do stuff, the awesome huge meetings that would last for, for days and days and days, then you need to start living like John Wesley lived out there. Amen. And do you know, hey, Paul, do you know the songs that they all get to sing some of the older stuff? That's in that blue pendulum? Do you know that Charles Wesley, John's brother, would write them the night of a revival? They, 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 they would be in service on a, on a Tuesday. The Lord would move so strong and so powerful. They, they, they wouldn't get home probably on Wednesday morning. And then he stayed up that night writing new songs for the next night about what God just did the night before. Do you understand that's where that stuff comes from? They were born out of, a, out of a spirit of fire and, 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 and desire and hunger and a heart felt expression of God's sozo in their life. That's where those souls came from. Yes. Do you understand that? Because when you start talking about Jehovah, my sozo, you're going to get excited. Yes. Come on. Yes. I messed up when I talked about this. I'm sorry. I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate. Thank you, Father. I've had, I've had people tell me, Jeff, we need to get back to that old time, did you? 
way we used to do. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, but maybe our definition of old times different. You may be talking 30 years ago. I'm talking 2,000 years ago. I'm trying to get back to what we read in Acts. And for them people, let me tell you, it was real. Because they'd be killed for what they believed. And if that's what it takes for us to get real, God's going to allow it. If, if, if the only way our faith can become real to us is through the cru crucible of persecution, guess what? That's what it took for it to get real for me. Yeah. Me losing everything I had. Not having anyone that could, that could help me. I mean, even my parents, as much as they love me, there wasn't anything they could do for me except they could smoke me to Cuba. Yeah. But there was only one who could do something for me. And I learned to trust him, and I learned who he was, and I learned to lean on him. I'm trying to save you that pain by saying, just do it without him. Just make the decision and start taking the actions to do it without having to experience the pain I've experienced. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying I've been through more pain. trying to tell you, don't wait for God to bring calamity and persecution before your faith gets real. Stop playing. All you have to do is start claiming Jehovah my sons. Everywhere you go, Jehovah my sons. And if you don't like that name, just, just, just start calling some of these names. That's the same thing. Tell me. What God can do with a handful of completely sobering believers. The last time he did that, he said he changed the world. Only had 12 of them. Michelle, can, 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 can we sing that? I know you might not be able to play it right now. I know Jen can sing it. He's, he's and you just give us a chord. I want us to take your bulletins out. Because I don't know if I'm going to be on the screen again. Just take your bulletins out. And turn to that. And I want us to say this together. Can we do that? The affirmation of faith, can we say it? With the, with the revelation that this is the vehicle that brought us so Can we do that? And I'm not talking about just doing it because it's something we do. We all have to do it. Let's stand up. You ready? Here we go. I believe in God, the Father of mine, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And hallelujah, on the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning. It is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 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 The words are fantastic. The words are fantastic when you realize it's a military border statement what Jesus Christ has already done.